good afternoon and welcome to this media stakeout with the International Commission of Human Rights Experts on Ethiopia, who just uh, provided an oral update to the Human Rights Council. And I will now, without further ado, let the chair of the commission, Mr. Mohamed Chande Hotman. We were required by the Human Rights Council resolution that established uh, that extended the mandate for one year to make an oral briefing at this session. So in our briefing, uh, uh, there are a number of things that we stressed. One is a, a number of positive developments that have, heard, that have taken place uh, uh, since the uh, uh, adoption of, of the of extension of the mandate. And this is one of the positive development was the cessation of peace agreement. But not just a cessation of peace agreement, but in addition to that, there is a, a specific clause, Article 10, which recognizes accountability and transitional justice. So it means that the parties have accepted transitional justice and accountability as part also of uh, the peace process towards sustainable peace. Uh, and then I think from the report, definitely there are some of the other development is uh, in humanitarian access, uh, restoration of some of the essential services, uh, and so on. So we noted that development. But secondly, concerning our mandate, which has, as you know, two branches, an investigative aspect and a, and a, and a, and a transitional justice aspect. So we also updated the council on those two uh, aspects of our, of our mandate investigation. Basically, we are continuing, but remotely. And transitional justice, our role is to provide technical assistance to the government of Ethiopia on transitional justice measures. I wanted to ask you about um, the relations that you have, that the Commission have uh, with um, the Ethiopian authorities. What can you tell us about the state of these relations and how much have you been able to go in the country and um, what are you uh, asking for? And uh, concerning your mandate, which uh, is uh, coming to an end in September, um, Ethiopian government reminded today and the African group as well, um, are you expecting uh, to this mandate to be um, um, prorogated for one more year, extended for one more year? What, what would you like to have? Thank you. Yeah, you know, in terms of relationship with the Ethiopian government, the commission members uh, visited Addis Ababa last year, I think 25th to 27th of July uh, uh, last year. Yeah, but since then, we have tried to re-engage, to reach out uh, to the government of Ethiopia. Uh, and that's why I said that, that we, they, uh, we urge them to re-engage, to re-cooperate. And I think the word I use is that whatever the modality of the cooperation, because right now we don't have any interlocutor, between the Commission and the government of Ethiopia to be able to dialogue, to consult, and so on. So we said they should, we urge them, it's a plea that they should uh, re engage uh, the Commission. Uh, and we've also asked other member states to help us in that process, member of Human Rights Council, and so on. So far, what we know is that uh, the tenure uh, of this uh, Commission will continue until. Uh, uh, September, we when it is the, the end, we will make the final report, uh, and it is uncertain what will happen next. Uh, but you know that many a number of member states use the word final. I mean, but th that is for member states. That's not for us. Our role is to present a comprehensive as possible report uh, that will contain uh, 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 information on the investigative aspect of our mandate. Uh, and on the technical assistance on transitional justice, those two aspects. So we try between now and uh, uh, and September to prepare to deliver on the mandate according to its terms. Yes, sorry. If I may, uh, just a follow up on the first part of, of my questions. So you said, yeah, I remember you, you you mentioned that last year that you were able to to go there and. Uh, in Ethiopia, oh, yes. but then now you don't have any more uh, any more relations with them. So, how do you explain that this uh, hope was uh, uh, broken? 
Well, it's difficult to know what is behind the thinking of the government. Uh, you know, it's for the government to decide. But we continue to reach out. I think it's our responsibility to reach out. And we have sent, we have communicated to the government. It's not that we are not communi we are communicate we have communicated to the government. We've asked to be invited to go there, as we have to do with, with other countries also. Uh, so that mainly the main interest is not us only commissioners to go there, but for the investigators to have access. Uh, to be access, and I think that is more effective when investigators are on the ground than to do it only by remote, uh, by, by, by remotely in terms of uh, speeding up the process, and then you have to one to one contact with the victim, special victim of abuses, uh, sexual violence, and, and, and so on. Yeah. A last question from Magali Bosha, Kyoto News. Yes. Yeah, I have a question. In your final remarks, you stress the need to protect witnesses. And I would like to know if you can tell us a bit more about that and why and are abuses committed against witnesses and by what, what sites? Thank you. Well, we just want to make sure. We've been talking to witnesses uh, remotely. Uh, and, uh, you know, there is, rec as in any conflict, whenever these issues are when people are interviewed, there is fear um, that um, there might be reprisals or whatever. So I was just making the case that any transitional justice process must have provision for witness protection. Um, and that also uh, international commissions may be able to do that better. But the domestic uh, process can also do that. But the witness protection is very important in these kinds of cases. Okay, thank you. thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.